Tonight on ABC 15 at 10, Ashley Paredes brings us the story of a cold case dating back 10 years and still unsolved. And Ashley, tell us a little bit about this case and what happened here. Right, so back in 2012, two people, a man and a woman, 70 year old, 30 year old, they were both found dead, brutally murdered inside of a travel trailer. Now the property, from what detectives tell me, um, there was a house in the front, mm -hmm. but then in the back, there was a trailer and someone came across that trailer trying to walk in and they find them brutally murdered. Now up until this point, you know, we had very little detail. So who and why? We don't know. MCSO is lead on this case and they're still investigating that. But we have learned how we received the autopsy results from the family of one of the victims. So we learn more about that tonight and the brutality of the attack. It is horrific, but hoping to help the family in some way. And this is an attack that happened when there were people living fairly close by to all of that, and yet nobody oh, yeah. heard anything, saw anything? That's right, and the mom points that out later, the mom of Layla Ziegler, the 30-year-old who was murdered here. She points out that there was the, the main home and the trailer in the back so that somebody in that home, you know, she wished would come forward and, and say something or somebody nearby that lived next door. Um, you know, it's it's an unusual situation. Uh, they believe because of the brutality of the attack that somebody would have been screaming, yelling for help. And they're hoping that maybe at the time someone didn't want to come forward because they were scared. But now, nearly 10 years later, they're hoping that that person can now come forward. Uh, one of the victims in this case had uh, a troubled relationship uh, there. Mm -hmm. there She had some uh, drug and alcohol issues right. as, as well at, at one point. Yeah. While you were shooting this story, though, uh, one of the people who may be a key witness in this case mm -hmm. actually just showed up. Oh, yeah. And it's interesting because sometimes you know, when I've been working on these cold cases, you go back out to the scene and some of the people that were there, you know, a long time ago are still living there or still in that area. So we come across someone who knew Layla very well from her past and that person was actually able to give me some good information as to what her mindset was, what was happening just days before her death. And that is key information for people who may not have known um, you know, what was happening during that time, they can get a better idea of Layla and her state mentality um, and what may have been, you know, one of the reasons of uh, why this attack might have happened. We, I, I know that uh, if there's a struggle and that sort of thing, uh, police are going to be taking DNA samples mm -hmm. and, and looking at the science behind that. And that science has really changed and evolved yes. over the last 10 years since this crime occurred. Does that give this family some hope that, that maybe they will be able to identify a suspect? Yeah. and. Touching on that, that is what they believe will be the answer to solving this case is DNA. And right now, um, MCSO is actively looking through all their evidence and they have a lot because they were able to take pieces of that trailer and they still have it to where they could retest. Now with new technology, there's different ways that they could find out, um, you know, if, if the DNA matches someone. Now here's one thing that, um, you know, I didn't get to mention in the story, but is key uh, that DNA sometimes Sometimes you can get a hit and mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you have found the offender, the murderer, the killer. Um, just because DNA is found, people, you know, think, oh man, you know, we, we have the answer, it's solved. And uh, for investigators, you know, they, they have to look through that. Um, in this situation, I know the family, they did say that there was a hit on um, actually a cup that was left inside of the trailer. They were excited, hoping that that could solve the case. But in fact, um, you know, investigators went back, spoke with that person, and apparently from what we're hearing from the family, um, it was someone who said they were there maybe a week before and mm. had left something. So, you know, it points them in the right direction to ask questions and get in touch with people, but it doesn't mean that it is the answer. And the hope here is that somebody will, will see this story and it mm -hmm. will trigger something, that, that somebody will come forward with information police don't have at this point. Yeah, you know, that's right. Uh, giving you a timeline of what happened, because this was back in 2012. Uh, we hear from the family of Layla Ziegler, and she, you know, they talk about, um, you know, her mindset and what was going on. She was a mother of three, and uh, they kind of give us a breakdown of, of what was going on in her life up until that point 
when she was murdered. And then we get a couple um, of different clues of what happened following that. And so all of this information is something that people out there maybe didn't know. And now with knowing, maybe they can come forward and say something. Silent witness is a key part of this case. And they're hoping that somebody who knows something but doesn't want to come forward, maybe anonymously, mm -hmm. will call in and give a tip. And let's hope this gives the family some of the answers they've been yes, looking for for the last closure. 10 years. Ashley, thank you.